Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for, with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal, Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I am thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I am always, always on the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests, and I got to tell you, today's show is a total winner. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that, and I'm really excited to pick his brain for your benefit and, quite honestly, my benefit as well. So for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching programs, my mastermind group, or through Powerful Words Character Development or All-Star Cheer Sites, you know how much I focus on the importance of developing your ability to sell, right? Well, the show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. He's got a ton of valuable information about what I consider to be a super hot topic to help you succeed, as well as a super fun way to deliver it. So I want you to strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be a blast. Now, as I'm sure you already know, I am committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. As we all know, we only get one chance around this merry-go-round, and we want to make sure it is one hell of a ride. Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your spouse, your significant other, your child, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So before we officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our guest today. Butch Bella is the owner of Dallas-based B2 training and development where he works with salespeople and organizations to gain more appointments, win more business, and retain more customers. From his first corporate job at 21, it took Butch only four years to be promoted as division sales manager, then another short five years to vice president of sales. At 35, he and a business partner acquired controlling interest in the company he helped build from a $35 million local business to one of the largest wholesale food distributors in the nation, with annual sales almost a quarter billion dollars. That's a billion with a B, folks. During his rapid ascent to sales and financial success, Bush also spent 10 years as a professional stand-up comedian. I'm expecting some good jokes, too. Honing not only his public speaking skills, but enjoying what he calls the best sales training I ever received. In May 2009, Butch underwent triple bypass heart surgery at 43 years old, completed cardiac rehab, and ran his first 5K 190 days after surgery. He's since completed dozens of 5Ks, two, two 10Ks, and two half marathons. He's written two books, The 10 Essential Habits of Sales Superstars, Plugging into the Power of 10, and Sales Management for Dummies. Butch, I am thrilled to welcome you to The Real Deal. Jason, thanks so much for having me, Butch. It's going to be hard to live up to that introduction. <laughs> it's, it's easy. Just don't suck. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, I, I'm wanting to hear what this guy has to say. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, before we get started, for those who haven't had the opportunity of reading your books or meeting you or hearing you speak, do me a favor. Share your story with our listeners. You know, What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Butch Bella? Oh, I'm passionate about uh, sales. I'm passionate about helping others. Um, I believe that I was put on this earth, uh, Jason, to be a difference maker. And I was blessed to have parents that, uh, who uh, sadly are no longer with us, but, uh, they instilled in me a belief that I could do and be anything. Um, that really shaped my early years. I was, uh, also blessed. And I think there's been certain times in my life where I was, You feel like you're in the right place at the right time. Then you look back years later and say, no, it was just all those things coming together. Uh, You mentioned being hired at 21 into this business. I I was hired by a gentleman who is still my mentor to this day. I talked to him the night before last. And we have remained close. And everything I have attained in this world is is due to the fact that he took a chance on a 21-year-old kid that had three weeks of college under my belt. And... Uh, I, I tell people that, you know, I, the reason I had three weeks is my sophomore week darn near killed me. 
But you know, it was it was one of those things. He never let that hold hold me back, and I I had the ability and the opportunity to take on as much responsibility as I felt like I could handle, and that's what my I feel like I've always been called to do is just to to be the guy that gravitates to the front of the room. Uh, I t- I've taken what I've learned in sales, and now I'm trying to share that with others. I love that. I love that, and quite honestly. I think that this message is super important. I guarantee you there's somebody listening to this podcast right now who's thinking, oh, you know, I, I own a cheer gym. I own a martial arts academy. I own a dance studio. It's not about sales. It's about the passion. Absolutely. And, and, and no matter what you do, even if, you, even if you're a, uh, I don't know, just a, a spouse of someone that works outside the home, you still have to sell. I mean, you have to sell your ideas. You have to sell your children on doing what you want them to do. I mean, uh, sales is what makes the world go round, and, and you know, you ask what I was passionate about. I, I, I tell people my my lot in life is to professionalize the profession of sales, and it bugs me because so many people a lot of times, well, I can't get any other job. I guess I'll go be a salesman. Really? Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I can go put on a white coat and start pulling teeth Monday morning to be a dick. I'm going to go to jail, you know. <laughs> And so I, I tell people that, you know, the, welcome to the world of sales. We love to have you, but train, get, get the training you need and be a professional. So a box of business cards, you can call yourself a salesman, but you're not a professional salesperson. Well, I'm sure there are people shaking their heads going, you know, you can get a box of business cards and basically be a, uh, a martial arts school owner or a cheer coach or, or whatever. So absolutely it's, uh, but it's, you know, it's dangerous nonetheless. Yeah, and, and I think with you know for your listeners, sales may not be on their business card. It may not be on their name plate on their desk. But I've got news for you. Everybody out there, there are certain uh, sales skills and certain talents and abilities that everybody needs if they're going to be a successful business person. Nothing you do uh can happen unless you sell something whether that's a membership whether that is having a someone enroll in one of your classes you have to sell to make the world go round well absolutely and quite honestly as a uh, as a parent of young kids i feel like i do more selling in my house than out of my house you know it just you're selling you know whether it's selling why you're going to eat that broccoli or why it's going to be a fun idea to go to the doctor and get a shot sure you know you're selling so I have some questions for you because I know sure. you've got amazing research but also experience in this. So what have you found makes great salespeople into superstars? Oh, man, I love this question. I have, um, and I, I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm here to plug, obviously, but I have a DVD series called The Game of Sales. And here's what makes a great salesperson. And have you ever heard somebody say, boy, he's on his game or she's got game or they've, they're really into their game? Absolutely. You know, here's what I found. Game stands for goals, attitude, motivation, and education. And you can take someone, and there's three basic parts to any, any business person. There's product knowledge, there's sales skills, and then there's game. Now, you can teach someone about any product out there, intangible service or a tangible product. They can learn the ins and outs, the benefits, the features of the product. Yes, you can also learn sales skills. That can be taught. I know people think that they're a born salesman. And as Zig Ziglar used to say, I've never opened up the paper and, and seen a, a birth announcement where Mrs. Mrs. Smith gave birth to a 10-pound, 8-ounce salesman. <laughs> Everything a salesperson does is a learned skill. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can learn to do it. But here's the thing. The basis on what all of that is built, the basis on what every successful entrepreneur is built, is game, goals, attitude, motivation, and education. And I'll give you a great example, Jason. We all can think of someone in our life that we've known who knew their product inside and out. They had great sales skills, uh, yet they had no goals. Their attitude was horrible. They weren't motivated, and they, they thought they knew everything, so they didn't see a need to continually educate themselves. There's nothing I can do for that person. They're going to fall flat on their face. Yet you give me someone that has no sales skills and they've got 
they've got goals. They have a phenomenal attitude. They're motivated. They want to learn and they're, they're able and willing to do what it takes to educate themselves. I can make that person a superstar. I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, you really just gave the keys to the bank right there. It, it really is. And, and here's the thing is that when you hire people in, in, in my newest book, the, the sales management for dummies, I talk a lot about just a lot of, 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 you know, not just for sales managers, but for any managers. I talk about hire hard, manage easy. And I look back on my career, Jason, at the times where I really made mistakes and I, I was just looking for the, the, you know, the guy that could fog a mirror or the first person that walked in with a pulse had the job. And those were the times where I really I regretted it. I was replacing that person. It cost me more than they ever were worth. And it was just, it went horribly wrong. Yet I can think of several times, one in particular, I talked to the guy Sunday that in 1993, I was moving from one division in the company to, to vice president of sales. And I had this, my eye on this guy because he was, he was working for a competitor and we'd talked for a year and, and I wanted him and I, and I knew he was the right person and I didn't rush it. And I, when I really met him, I didn't have a spot for him. And then I hired him to take my job as I graduated up the ladder and he, he's still with the company today, 21, 22 years later. So hire hard, manage easy. The problem is too many times people hire easy and then they manage hard. And for a salesperson, if you will, or any employee, if you'll look for a kid or a person or, or an employee when you're hiring, if you'll look for that game and don't worry about what they know about your business, worry about whether they have goals in life, whether their attitude is something you want representing your company, whether they're motivated and whether they want to continually educate themselves, that will be your next superstar employee. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Tell me this. How did, how did your being a professional stand-up comedian make you a better salesperson? Oh, wow. Uh, how much time have you got? Uh, <laughs> no, really, it was, uh, I, 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 you know, I never did it full-time for a living, but I did it professionally full-time. So I never quit my day job, but I was out every weekend, you know, for 10 years on the road. So, Number one, it, it taught me about, you know, and everybody has seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, always be closing, closings for, you know, yeah. uh, or coffees for closers and all, and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Well, that's garbage. Okay. That's the worst thing could have ever happened to salespeople. The, what they really need to say is not ABC, but ABP, always be prospecting. Because as a comedian, you're booking dates on your calendar to go be at a comedy club, you know, the last week of December, the third week in February or whatever. And if you don't do that, you're going to be home on Saturday night and Friday night. You're not, and you don't make any money. So number one, it taught me to always keep my pipeline full of potential prospects and, and opportunities. Perhaps the cup, the two greatest lessons I learned, you, you think most people go to a comedy club, Jason, to have a good time. And sadly, that's not true. They go there and they've got their arms crossed. They're sitting there going, okay, fat boy, make me laugh. <laughs> and it's just a challenge. So you've got just that long to win them over. And so it taught me to think on my feet, to really be able to speak and win over a crowd and get people on my side very, very quickly. And I felt like I got really, really good at that. But the greatest lesson that I learned was how to use my voice as a tool and how to use the pacing and, and, and pause and, 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 and search for a word. Because here's the thing that does. I knew exactly what I was going to say just then. But your voice is a tool. And you can get people's attention or you can lull them to sleep by how you use your voice. And so if I had to take on an accent to tell a joke, I'd do that. Or if I, you know, you, your voice is such a great tool. But don't, you don't lose the fact that you can get as much out of taking it down as you can taking it up. So many people, when they want to get their point across, they scream. But let me tell you, when you're asking for the sale or you're convincing someone that they need to be a member of your gym or what you can do for them or what martial arts has meant to your life, instead of raising your voice, drop it down. Put the passion in there. Get them to where the, you, they can feel it. And it's just dripping off every single word. My voice is the greatest tool that I have. 
That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, and I would assume your your ability to build instant rapport, you know. Vitally important. Well, yeah. I mean, and because I would assume, I would assume that most folks, you know, when they think of, oh, I have to now talk to somebody I don't know, you know, that fear comes up. Well, and here's why. is Obviously, you're doing stand-up. You get over your fear of public speaking and so forth and so on. Um, and it's just I, – I, I honestly believe the fear of public speaking or the fear of things like that is because you don't want to look foolish. And you don't want to, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you feel like you're not going to know what to say. Well, I've got news for you. When you get in that situation, you don't know what to say. But when you go out to, to do that, ask questions of the other person. Zig Ziglar, and, and I'll refer to Zig several times probably today. He's, you know, my hero. I've been blessed to speak at the Ziglar Corporation a few times. Um, but he used to say that you can learn more about a person uh, in 10 minutes asking questions than you can in 10 years by trying to get them interested in you. So instead of going out telling them all of this information about you, why don't you just ask questions? And what I train people to do is what I call back pocket. Have some questions in your back pocket. If you're at a social event and you run into someone that you really would like to get to know, obviously everybody's got a few questions. That they, so tell me what you do, and, and you learn a little bit about them. And then that conversation lags, and that's when the little bead of sweat forms on their forehead and you know the breathing starts panicked or something. I suggest to people always have a couple of questions in your back pocket that you can go to that are almost rescue questions. They're almost a lifesaver that you throw out there. And one that I love is if you, let's say you and I are at a, at a cocktail party or let's say we're at a ball game and I'm talking to Jason, learning about you and all this kind of stuff. And you know, you've told me about your business and all of a sudden the conversation lags and neither one of us really is kind of awkward. We don't know where to go. The question that I love is, so what do you do for fun? Mm. Because you know what? You're fixing to learn a whole lot about that person. You're going to learn if they have to spend time, not have, but if they spend time with children, if they have children, they spend time with their activities. You're going to learn, you know, what this person does in their spare time. You learn a lot about what drives a person by what they do for fun. Here's the rest of that story. When you find out what someone does for fun, Generally, you can make a connection with that. If you, the, the example I always use is, is the old Andy Griffith show when Barney Fife was trying to impress people to get into the club and he thought a high golf, golf score was great. And, you know, and, and so, I mean, don't, don't act like you know something about something you don't know about. Don't do that. And make yourself look foolish. But I promise you, you know something about what they're going to talk about. Even if you're not a hunter, well, you know, and they're, and they hunt. I don't hunt. I don't know anything. I don't even own a gun and I'm in Texas, you know, so I mean, go figure. Uh, but I just never have hunted. So, you know, but I can talk about it. I know enough about it to keep the conversation going. And I have prided myself on being able to walk from one conversation with a guy that's a manual laborer that may dig ditches. And then five minutes later, I can talk to an attorney that is, you know, and I, not that I'm on either level you know, equal to them, but I can at least carry on a conversation. That makes so much sense. That actually makes so much sense. I actually want to take a, a little bit of a turn here. Um, okay. One of the things you talked about in, um, you know, with game was goals, right? So right. I know we, I'm, I'm a big, big proponent of written goals. You know, Absolutely. Why do you feel like having written goals is so important to success? Um, well, Oprah Winfrey uses it. Richard Branson uses it. Uh, Jim Carrey has said to have written himself a million dollar check when he was broke, um, and dated it for like uh, a month before Dumb and Dumber came out. Um, <laughs> so my, my argument is, um, if you have a to do list or a grocery list, if you can't remember what you're supposed to pick up at the store or what you're supposed to do today, how are you going to remember what you want to do with your life? And that's what written goals are. It's your it's your to accomplish list. You have your to do list for today. You know who you need to call and what where you you got to pick up milk on the way home. If you can't remember that, what makes you think you're going to remember where you want to be a year from now, three years from now, five years from now? And people ask me, Are you one of them guys that believes in sticking to the bathroom mirror? Yep, I am. 
And it's because the people that generally do that, their bathroom is bigger than my house. And I'm not going to argue with success. And if it gives me even the slightest bit of a chance, a better chance to accomplish my goals, I'm all in. There's no reason not to. And I work with people all the time that say, oh, I know what they are. Really, well, what are they? Well, I, you know, I'll, I'll get back. You know, if you cannot read them off just like that, you, you don't know them well enough. And you don't have, you know, the old saying, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And I think just having having written goals is almost like setting the destination in your GPS. And I'm going to get off on a tangent because this is something I'm very passionate about. Having written goals is setting the destination in your GPS. However, as soon as you get in your car, if you were to get in your car right now, and I would drive from Dallas to where you're at in New Jersey, I could get there. Now, I'm probably going to have to stop for gas, but that, that doesn't mean I'm going to turn around and come home. Um, I'm probably going to have to stop uh, and use the bathroom, but that doesn't mean I'm going to turn around and come home. Uh, I'm going to have to stop and rest because it's longer than a day's drive. Uh, I may have a flat tire, but that doesn't mean I'm turning around and coming home. Uh, if I get to West Virginia and there's a road closed, I'm going to go around. I'm still going to New Jersey. Here's the problem with goals is people write them down or they don't write them down. And the first time they have a flat tire in life or they run into a place where they got a pause or they run into a detour, they let a detour become a derail. And that is... That's the problem humans have is that, yes, you set that destination in your personal GPS and understand you're going to run into roadblocks. You're going to run into situations where you got to stop and rest or get gas or refuel or, you know, get your batteries recharged or whatever. But don't take your eye off that goal. I love that. I absolutely love that. Tangent or not, that is that's something that's something everybody needs to hear and quite yeah. honestly, multiple times. Yeah, and, and, and the thing about it is we too many times we let a detour be a derail. And that, that they think, well, I guess it's meant the success is meant for other people, not for me. Really? Who who decided that? Yeah, who decided it wasn't meant for you? I actually had that conversation last night with a client who said, Well, you know, I've seen this client and that client, another client, you know, they've grown exponentially, but you know, I'm not that kind of person. Really? What kind of person are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, how do you put your pants on? Exactly. <laughs> and nobody's different. It's really just how we spend our time. So I, I have one more, one, one additional question. Sure. You had mentioned, um, and, and, and I read this earlier, but kind of glossed over it. How did you, how did you turn, you know, open heart surgery, <laughs> you know, into a positive? Cause you seem like, I mean, you're all about positivity. Oh, it was, I was on, uh, and I don't know how much time you got, but I was on the treadmill at uh, cardiac rehab and I got lucky. I didn't have a heart attack. I caught it before it caught me. And, uh, you know, I tell people on May 18th of 2009, if you would have asked me, Butch, how would you like triple bypass open heart surgery? We got it on sale. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have told you, I don't want it. I don't need it. And I can't afford it. And that's the same stuff everybody hears every day. And, Yet the day they showed me, okay, cowboy, you got a 70, 280s and a 90% blockage. Uh, I'm all in. I changed my tune. Not only did I want it, need it, found a way to afford it. I wanted an expert doing it. And what it taught me was that your customers, your clients, the people that, and let's just, I'll talk to people that are operating a martial arts academy. Okay. You have people that need your service and their life is in as bad a shape as my heart was. They just don't know it. All the good things that martial arts will do for them, all the good things that exercise and the cardio that it will do for them, their life is, a, is in as bad a shape as my heart was. But they're just like me. They're walking around and didn't know it. They need an expert to show them their blockage. And then once they see the blockage, they want an expert doing the work. I promise you, when they told me I needed open heart surgery, I didn't want the cheapest guy in town. <laughs> I, 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 and I, you know, here's the crazy part. We talk about continuing education. My surgeon was 62 years old. Do you think I, I hoped that he had quit learning the day he got out of college? <laughs> you know, I, I wanted him Googling stuff on the way home that afternoon. If, if there was a breakthrough in, in open heart surgery, that, that I wanted it the next morning. 
But here's the great part about all of that is what it taught me was that we as a person, we only deal with the information available to us. The day before I had that, the day before they showed me my block, I needed that heart surgery. I probably needed it for six months or a year before then. But it did not become important until I wanted it. And what made me want it was the information available to me. My finances didn't change. My heart certainly didn't change. But what they did was they they gave me new information. And if you'll find a way to present new information to your clients or potential clients and show them where there's blockage in their life, guess what? They may not know it. Then they're going to want you to be the expert to take them from one side to the other. That's fabulous. That That is absolutely fabulous. It is now time for our resource of the week. So, Bush, tell me this. How can our listeners find out more about you and how you go about helping entrepreneurs to succeed? You can, uh, my website, butchbella.com, B-U-T-C-H-B-E-L-L-A-H.com. You can find me there. I've got 400 plus blog posts. Um, if, uh, you know, uh, you, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter at sales power tips, S A L E S power tips. Um, you can email me at butch at butchbella.com. And if you would like your, uh, listeners, can actually, my first book was called The Ten Essential Habits of Sales Superstars. Uh, and it's basically just ten habits that I think people should use day in and day out to get in. Because we, we talk about habits and they always say it takes 21 days to establish a habit, or 30 days or 60 days, or whatever. And that's garbage because I quit smoking January 1st of 2009. If I were to have a cigarette right now, Jason, I'd have a carton before we were done, and then I'd have to lay down and let the nicotine high go away. So it's not going to take me 21 days to establish a new habit. It takes 21 days to establish a good habit. So for your listeners, if they will go to butchbella.com slash the real deal, they can download a free copy of my first book, The Ten Essential Habits of Sales Superstars, plugging into the power of 10. And it's 10 very basic habits that anybody can instill into their life and their business. Well, that's a no-brainer. Grab that immediately. Absolutely. Fabulous, fabulous. All right. Butch, I always uh, like to, to close out my podcast with one, what I consider to be very important and telling question. So if you could give business owners just one solid piece of advice to either help their business or even more importantly, help them to live a better, more balanced life, what would that piece of advice be? Uh, well, I tell you what, it's, it's, I'm going to steal a, a, a one from one from the book and it's one of the habits. Get to work 10 minutes early. If you're supposed to be there at eight o'clock, get there at seven fifty. If you're supposed to be there at seven thirty, get there at seven twenty. And if you will take 10 minutes a day to get yourself and your materials mentally and physically and emotionally ready to take on the day, that'll be the most powerful 10 minutes of your day. And here's the key to that. If you, if you, if you just go in just to play on the internet, check your fantasy football or see what happened on Dancing with the Stars or whatever, just stay home. But if you're going to go home and literally get ready, if you had someone show up at your door tomorrow morning, your, your best potential client, and they had a checkbook in hand, if you had to do anything but turn on the lights, you're not ready to do business. So I want you to be ready to do business when your customer's ready to do business. Get to work 10 minutes early because Jason, here's the great part about that 10 minutes a day for a 48 week year is more than 40 hours that is more than one full week per year of tremendously productive time that you have gained over your competition and the best part is they don't even know you're open i love it i love it i love it bush thank you so much for joining me today i know how busy your schedule is and it means the world to me that you share some of your experience and some of your wisdom with me and my listeners. Well, Jason, thank you so much. I, uh, and if everybody would go to Amazon.com, if you get the, the book, leave me a review. And uh, my new book, uh, The Sales Management for Dummies, is out now. They can pick that up as well. Perfect. 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 Folks, that's all the time we've got for today. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from one of our mastermind groups, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. 
Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal, make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. Go get them, folks. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit jasonmsilverman.com.